everyone, my name is Catherine and I'm with Ear Leaders Worker and today we're going to be reading a story about Moses. So this story is called A Baby in a Basket. A long time ago, God's special people, the Hebrews, were free and happy. There were lots and lots of them, men and women and children, and they all lived in a land called Egypt. They had farms, shops and lovely homes. Then one day, Egypt had a new king, King Pharaoh. He didn't like the Hebrews at all, and he decided he would make slaves of them. So this wicked king made life very difficult for the Hebrews, oh dear. He started by making them build huge sheds where he could store all the grain that was grown in his kingdom. See that's King Pharaoh, not a very nice man. But the funny thing was, the more King Pharaoh tried to destroy the Hebrews, the more their numbers grew and grew and grew until there were so many of them that he got really frightened. <gasps> Can you do a frightened face? Oh no. They'll take over my kingdom, he cried. What shall I do? So what do you think the king did? What did he do? Can you see him all the way up there? There's so many Hebrews. He made things even worse. Not only did he make the Hebrews build the huge sheds, he also made them dig the clay to make the bricks. And then they had to actually make the bricks. That was a really nasty job. Look, they're working really hard, aren't they? But even this did not stop the Hebrews having more and more children. I'll fix them, thought the wicked King Pharaoh. I'll give orders to kill all the newborn babies We'll throw them into the river. What a ghastly man he was. Not very nice, is he? Living near the king's palace was a Hebrew fa family, Amram and his wife, Jochebed, their son, Aaron, and Miriam, their daughter. Jochebed was expecting another baby when the king gave his order to kill all the newborn boys. Amram and Jochebed were so worried. Can you show your worried face? Oh no. And horror of horrors, the new baby was a boy, oh dear. Knowing that King Pharaoh would have, would have her baby thrown into the river, Jochebed went to great lengths to hide the baby. She thought of all sorts of places to put him. In a cupboard. Where's the cupboard? Under the bed. In the washing. Even in a tree trunk. Put a baby under the bed. But the day came when Jochebed could no longer hide the baby. She would soon be found out. So she made a beautiful basket for her baby and laid it among the, bu the bulrushes at the side of the river. Jochebed told her daughter Miriam to stand a little way off and watch what happened to the baby. And this is what Miriam saw. That morning, King's, King Pharaoh's beautiful daughter had decided to wash in the river. So Princess Fatima left the palace with her servants and they all made their way to a quiet spot. The princess knew she would not be disturbed there. And it just happened to be the exact spot where Jochebed had left her baby in the basket. Princess Fatima saw the basket and looked inside. What a Beautiful baby, she said. He must belong to a Hebrew. Just at that moment, Miriam, who had been watching all the time, came up to the princess. Shall I find a Hebrew woman to nurse the baby, Princess Fatima? She asked. Yes, please, the princess replied. That's a very good idea. So as quick as lightning, Miriam went to fetch her mother. Jochebed was so happy when Miriam told her what had happened. She ran, can you run, all the way to the river. 
When she got there, Princess Fatima said to Jockbird, Please look after this little baby for me. I will pay you well for your work. So Jockabird got her baby back and, of course, Princess Fatima made sure he was safe from King Pharaoh. And the princess decided to call the baby Moses, a name that means taken from the water. When Moses was older, he went to live at the palace with, the princess, with Princess Fatima. She treated him like a son and even the wicked king was kind to him. But Moses knew he was a hero. He knew that his own people were slaves to the king, and he knew that was wrong. But Moses did not know yet that God had chosen him to be the leader of the Hebrews. God was not quite ready to free his own people yet. Just give Moses a few more years to grow into a fine, strong man. Can you show me your muscles? You've got strong muscles. God thought to himself, then he will lead the Hebrews, my special people, to freedom in the promised land. And that's the end today. I hope you enjoyed the story today and I'll see you again soon. Bye! <laughs>